Hello and welcome to BookNook. My name is Bethany Kinder and I'm the Communications and Development Director for Read Aloud West Virginia. With me today is a very special guest, Ms. Jennifer Griffith, and she is the student coordinator for third year medical students at WVU Physicians of Charleston. She is also our chapter president in Boone County for Read Aloud West Virginia. Welcome, Jennifer. Glad to be here with you today. Thank you so much for coming. So I want to touch base a little bit about what you do professionally. Yes, I am with WVU Physicians of Charleston, third year medical students that come down from WVU Medical School and they do their rotations. I'm actually in the internal medicine department. So those students come down and they do their rotation and I work with them one-on-one -on -one and get them through the system and uh, they travel around to our local hospitals, uh, CMC, uh, General Memorial, and uh, Wounds and Children. So I work closely with those students and uh, it's a great job. Uh, so uh, um, that kind of took me from what I was prior to being a school teacher and uh, I'm kind of back in that field again. Uh, you know, these students are a little older and uh, a little bit more knowledgeable in everything, what they've got into, but uh, it's, it's a good job. Wonderful. So tell us a little bit about what your role is with all the spare time that you have as the chapter president <laughs> of our Boone County Read Aloud chapter. Uh, yes, usually the time with Read Aloud, it's throughout the day, mostly of the evenings. Um, I've got a great group. Just recently, last summer, was able to form a board with that and uh, we're excited about the board and um, having more involved in our community. So folks that have been out in the community that give back and do, they're able to help us uh, with the Read Aloud and the support of Boone County Schools. Um, we started and joined in with Read Aloud West Virginia about four years ago. and. Um, um, before that, and I wasn't aware of Read Aloud West Virginia, I had, um, my husband was a football coach at Scott High School, so I had uh, a Read Aloud program started there with football, and I had only um, did that within the community there. So the feeder schools into Scott High School, uh, those boys went out on Thursdays and read to the schools, gave them a ticket to a free football game on Friday nights, and our football team went out and read to those kids. Um, as I went through those years, I realized, you know, I wanted to bring in the whole county. You know, we have three major high schools there, Sherman, Scott, and Van, and I wanted to bring the whole community in with Read Aloud. Um, so I reached out to uh, Director Mary Kay Bond, and uh, she met with me, and we started Read Aloud Boone County. And, um, you know, we went in full force. Um, it was me at the start, and I was gathering up and getting coordinators for all the elementary schools and to see who wanted to be on board with that. We've got great role models in our county with those. We either have a teacher in the building or we have a volunteer, and that volunteer is usually there during the day, every day. So um, we have great repertoire with that person. And um, so, you know, four years into it, uh, it's been great. Uh, we have a website as well, Facebook, and uh, everything's put out there. Uh, parent involvement, so we do a lot of things with it. That's so wonderful, and we are so proud of all the efforts that you've made thus far in Boone County. Tell me a little bit about some of the other activities that you all have formed as the Boone County chapter. I know you mentioned uh, reading to uh, the kids from the football team and things of that nature, but tell us a little bit more about what you've done. Uh, we do have our training, so we, you know, our big thing is getting volunteers into the classroom. That's our number one. Um, and those teachers and schools allowing our volunteers to come in after they're trained. Um, we, we do the book drives to get those books in the hands of our volunteers. So those schools will have extra books in their libraries, into their classroom, and those volunteers can go in and choose a book and read the book to the students. Uh, so with that, throughout the year, we have uh, volunteers that come in and help, and we have the donations. Uh, we're always posting, you know, if you have donations to give, you can do that. Um, and we have our book drives. Our major book drive is during the fall, and it's fall football. So we know that we can grab a lot of folks from our community, and we have at all three sites on a Friday night football game at Scott Van and Sherman. And we set up, and everybody can come in and donate a book. And in the past, we've had great volunteers for that, yet we've also had those that's donated books, whether it's been Girl Scout groups or whatever. And um, throughout that whole week, everybody's always turning in books and giving books. And uh, so we're able to take those books, give those back into the classroom and the libraries. That's wonderful. And tell me a little bit about uh, the correspondence that you've had with McDonald's and the partnership and kind of how that came about. Uh, last summer, I uh, was contacted by Chris Conley. 
He's one of the managers there and owners of McDonald's in Madison now around here in Charleston area, him and his sister and father. And they reached out to me and uh, Lauren Numroff, she was one of the authors. Uh, she's a great author of ours, you know, we reach out to her all the time and <laughs> she's constantly giving us great feedback and things. But he reached out to me asking if um, we would like to uh, do this activity with them that McDonald's was getting books in and they were going to go into the Happy Meals. And I think he heard it through the phone with my voice. I just went silent. But the excitement on my face because I'm thinking Happy Meals and books. What a great combo, right? So um, we had a great event one weekend and um, it went for about a month where they put books in Happy Meals. And uh, Laura's book was one of those little tiny books that went in there. So uh, we did a fundraiser with that book drive at McDonald's, and McDonald's gave out coupons and free items that day. And we went Facebook Live with everything and had the big box of books for donations. And uh, so they also were on our board as well. So we were lucky to have that opportunity uh, to grab a lot of books that day, get a lot of folks in from the community and everyone that went through a drive through received a book in their Happy Meal. So that was a great thing for McDonald's. And that's such a wonderful testament to our goal, which is to keep books in the hands and on the minds of West Virginia's children. So we thank you all so much for those efforts, and I know that you made a difference. Thank you. you touched on Facebook Live a little bit. So I know personally that you have a Facebook Live uh, thing that happens. So tell, tell the viewers a little bit more about that. Facebook Live, um, again, this probably started about two years ago. Um, really wasn't aware of what Facebook Live was. I started seeing some newscasters and actually the weatherman uh, <laughs> was the first one, Spencer Atkins, to say the <laughs> least, that got me started with this. He was giving um, the news one day and he went live with it. It was his first live event. And I watched that process and I started thinking, you know, what a great way to get in the homes of students and parents and especially summer because it was during the summer and um, I needed something to start and to get going that uh, we could have more summer reading involved and but my main goal too was getting the parents involved um, at that time I thought you know there may not be many books in a home but social media and technology is big and it's booming so with that, we started Facebook Live, and uh, we started on Saturday mornings, and um, read a book, and show and tell the book, and everyone would join in, and I would ask the parents, you know, just to jot down their child's name that was watching, and I'd give a shout out to the kids during that time. Um, as it grew, we were able to bring in authors on those Saturday mornings. So if I had a great contact with an author out there that knew I was getting ready to read the book or we had someone read their book, they would also join in on the conversation. So at the end of that, um, the authors could ask questions, the parents could ask questions to the author, the author could update them on things that were going on, uh, new books being released. Um, so at that time, it was great. It started out slow because everybody catching on how to do it, but. It got, it got big and we had volunteers to come in and do that. We, we did it through the summer, we did it every Saturday. And then this past year, we went through the week. So uh, there was a day during the week that we picked out and usually we picked around the seven, eight o'clock time due to we know kids are in sports and ball and everything, but we was thinking at that point in time, everybody's coming in, it's rest time, great time to read a book. So again, I stressed on you know having that family time on that Saturday morning mom, dad, uncle, aunt, grandparents, whatever, with that child. And uh, it was a show and tell book, and they got to see the pages, listen to the read, and then, you know, let them know that that book hopefully was gonna be in their school library, they could go check it out. So we really like our read aloud live time we have. That's such a great idea. Now, are you going to be continuing this Facebook Live this summer? We are, we are. We've got some uh, new faces that's gonna be shown on there. Uh, my face gets old sometimes, <laughs> so I pull out as many. And having the board member and having the board on there, uh, we're gonna have many more faces of that. So you're gonna see different types of books being read. Uh, we have new authors coming on board with that. So the books that we chose to read and looking at, we reach out to those authors. 
Um, and I always stress, you know, go out and like their pages and see what they're all about. You can check up on them and see what's being posted. We have a lot of great West Virginia authors that we use. Uh, many of those have came on our show or came onto our Read Aloud Live or came to events that we've had within Boone County. Um, and all that, everything that we do is shown on our page. I stress our Facebook page, just like West Virginia Read Aloud, you know, there's so much stuff on there that you can get. And um, all the pics that we have throughout the year are posted on there. Um, one big event that we do every year is Read to My Pet Day. And um, there again, we're getting parents involved. Uh, it's one evening in November. It's a busy day because during that day, um, whether they're at school or home or they come home from school and go to the friend's house or whatever, um, it's Read to My Pet Day. So everyone's getting ready to come home and read to their pet, and then those pictures get submitted and we post. And those pictures are posted all night up until the next day. And we've had so many uh, great feedback with that, that the kids are reading all these different pets and the books, but the parents are there and they're taking the photographs and sending those in. And just, it, it's a great, it's a great thing that we do in Boone County with that, the Read to My Pet Day. It's always fun and to see what, you know, we've had many animals that's been pictured. Usually it's just the dog and cat, the reading to the dog and cat, but we've had horses and pigs and birds and uh, it's great, so. What a great way to get parents and kids involved. So the viewers, if they are interested in seeing Facebook Live or seeing more information about Boone County Read Aloud, what is your Facebook tag? It is Read Aloud West Virginia dash Boone County. And that'll take you straight to, it's dash Boone County. So that'll take you straight to the site. And uh, we've updated some things as of yesterday and today. So some great things that's coming up that we're gonna be doing. Um, the month of May, we gave away uh, 11 books for the first 11 days of May. And um, the, the, uh, the parents would call in or they would post their picture or their uh, book that the child has read. And then we did a drawing every evening at six o'clock. And on that post daily, uh, we took all the kids that had read a book that day and we put it in a jar and we drew a name out and that child received a free book. So they were able to pick that up. And uh, we're doing one more big event uh, before summer hits and the schools are closed. Um, we have these gigantic books and kids love gigantic books. <laughs> so uh, we've got a couple of those that we're gonna be giving out and um, getting ready for the new year. And you know, all the fundraisers that we do and getting the book drives going, that's always our kickoff to that uh, with the book drives. And you know, our main thing is getting books in the home. So um, getting books in the school, books in our library, and those books and those book bags that can take home and read all summer. Well, we are just <clears throat> so thankful for all, for all the work that you do in Boone County, but for today, what is the first book that you're going to be reading to those who are watching us? Well, the first book that I'm going to be reading, it's kind of a secret. I don't want to spoil <laughs> everything <clears throat> right now with it, but you know, um, we see a lot of bully in the classroom. We've read about it, we've seen about it, uh, we hear about it, it's a sad situation that happens, and um, you know, this book, it's, it's about animals, and it's about this specific little animal and all his friends, but it's a storyline that you can see um, that will help students, and it's a great reader for kindergarten through third grade. Um, you could use it for fourth grade readers, but you know, it's just a, a great book, great illustration, but easy to understand and maybe put in that child's mind of you know maybe what's going on maybe within them. Well, we are so looking forward to hearing you read, but for those that tuned in, thank you so much for tuning in to Book Nook this week. And again, uh, find Jennifer and all the Boone County chapter happenings on Facebook, but for now, we'll, we'll be ready for you to read. Thank you. Good afternoon. Our first book that we're going to read today is Chester Raccoon and the Big Bad Bully by Audrey Penn. Chester Raccoon stood in front of his hollow tree looking gloomy. His younger brother Ronnie and his best friend Cassie stood behind him. We don't want to go to school, Chester told his mother. We want to stay home with you. Please, may we stay home with you. I thought you liked school, said Mrs. Raccoon. We do, said Chester. 
then why do you want to stay home with me? Chester lowered his head and shuffled his foot. Er's a oly a oo, he explained in a quiet, muffled voice. Mrs. Raccoon reached out and tenderly lifted Chester's head with her hand. What did you say? Chester gazed into his mother's loving eyes and gulped. There's a bully at school. And he's horrible, cried Ronnie. He's big and mean. He has giant claws on his hands and feet, wailed Cassie. And thanks, screeched Chester. And fire comes out of his nose. And if you get in his way, he'll step on your face and squash you like a bug. Like a bug, echoed Ronnie. Oh my, he sounds very scary, said Mrs. Raccoon. Bullies can be very difficult. I'll tell you what, she said, told the frightened cubs. I'll walk you to school and back, and then we can decide what to do about this bully. When the raccoons reached the school tree, Chester tugged on his mother's arm. That's him. That's the bully. He pointed a trembling finger at a badger standing by the pond. Isn't he awful? Isn't he the most scary-looking bully you've ever seen? Oh, my, yes, whispered Mrs. Raccoon. But I'm sure we can work things out. Before leaving, she gently fluffed Chester's mask and playfully tweaked Ronnie's nose. Be brave. She told the cubs and gave each of her sons a comforting kiss in their palms. After school, Chester, Ronnie, and Cassie told Mrs. Raccoon how the badger bullied his classmates at recess. First, he snatched a ball away from the squirrel and popped it. Then he climbed atop the jungle gym and squashed the possum's fingers until the possum fell to the ground. Then he spooked a doe who bumped into the skunk who got so scared that he sprayed and stunk. Even our teacher couldn't get him to behave. Sometimes animals are bullies because they don't know any other way to be, explained Mrs. Raccoon. But I think there's a way you can change things. Go get your friends and bring them over to our tree. I want to share a story. A few minutes later, a crowd of eager young forest animals stood at the base of Chester's tree house and Mrs. Raccoon began her tale. Once, a long time ago, there was a secret forest sprinkled in yellow stones. The stones were round and polished, big and little, and smooth enough to hold. Every animal in the forest collected and treasured them. One day, an animal found a blue stone. It was very exciting, since no animal had ever found a blue stone. But the blue stone was rough and doyle, without any polish or shine, and it had sharp prickly points sticking out of it, making it very hard to hold. Careful not to hurt those paws, the animals carried the stone to the center of the forest and placed it atop a tree stump where everyone could see. Perhaps the stone is blue because it popped out of the ground too soon, suggested a fox. So the animals waited and watched for many days and nights to see if the blue stone would turn yellow. But the stone remained blue and its outer shell remained sharp and pointy. I believe the stone is blue because that's the color it's meant to be, said a very wise snake. Therefore, we shall travel the blue stone for the color it is. If we want to hold the stone, as we do our yellow stones, we'll have to work together to smooth its outer shell. So first the woodpeckers turn, took turns, chipping out of the stone sharp prickly points with their beaks. Then the chipmunks rolled the stone with their noses, while other animals shined and buffed the stone with tree bark and fluffy tails. 
In time, the blue stone was as smooth and shiny as the yellow stones. Mrs. Raccoon smiled down at the young animals, listening to her story. The badger at your school, it's just like that blue stone, she explained to Chester and his schoolmates. He is a badger, and that is the way he is meant to be. But if you work together, I think you can smooth out his bullying ways. The next day at school, when the recess bell rang, all of the little animals went outside together. They huddled close to one another and walked toward the bully in one great big confident pack with Chester in front holding a ball. At first the bully looked at them with a twinkle in his eye thinking, I'll get one of you. But as the pack got nearer and nearer to him without a hint of fear, the badger's expression changed. His eyes widened, his jaw dropped open, his knees grew weak and wobbly. Suddenly it was the bully who was scared. He began to whimper and squeal and he thought, they're coming to get me back. But there was nowhere to run, he just stood there with his back up against a tree as his schoolmates drew closer and closer and closer. Finally, Chester was nose to nose with the trembling badger. He narrowed his eyes and looked as serious as his little furry face would allow. Then without hesitation, he held up the ball, looked straight into the bully's eyes and asked, want to play? Huh? The surprised bully stopped shaking. He looked at his classmates who were laughing and offering friendship. You want me to play with you? He squealed with delight. He gently took the ball out of Chester's hands. Okay, he said to them, I'll play. So in one short moment, the badger softened and the bully became a friend. The badger didn't need to bully anyone ever again. Chester glanced toward the wooded path and saw his mother watching and smiling. She placed a kiss in her palm and showed it to her son. Chester did the same and then joined in the fun. The end. Chester Raccoon and the Big Bad Bully. Our next book we're going to read is Drat, That Fat Cat. Once there was a cat, a fat, fat cat, but was that cat fat enough? No, he was not, so he paddled along the path in search of food. The cat met a rat. Have you any food, rat, deep in your hole? No, I have not, said the rat. Too bad, then I must eat you up. Eat me up? You are fat enough already. But was the cat fat enough? No, he was not. So he gobbled up the rat and paddled along the path in search of food with the rat squeak, squeak, squeaking inside him. The fat cat met a duck. Have you any food, duck, to nibble in your nest? No, I have not, said the duck. Too bad then. I must eat you up. Eat me up? You're fat enough already. But was the cat fat enough? No, he was not. So he gobbled up the duck and he paddled along the path in search of food with the duck quack, quack, quacking and the rat squeak, squeak, squeaking inside of him. The fat cat met a dog. Have you any food, dog, hidden in your house? No, I have not, said the dog. Too bad then, I must eat you up. Eat me up? You are fat enough already. But was the cat fat enough? No, he was not. So he gobbled up the dog and padded along the path in search of food with the dog woof, woof, woofing and the duck quack, quack, quacking and the rat squeak, squeak, squeaking inside him. The fat cat met an old lady. Have you any food, old lady, at the bottom of your basket? 
no, I have not, said the old lady. Too bad then, I must eat you up. Eat me up? You're fat enough already. But was the cat fat enough? No, he was not. So he gobbled up the old lady and paddled along the path in search of food with the old lady saying, Drat that fat cat. The dog woof woof woofing and the duck quack quack quacking. The rat squeak squeak squeaking inside of him. The bee buzzed around the fat cat's head and without thought he swallowed it whole. The bee buzzed around inside the fat cat where he found a rat squeak squeak squeaking, a duck quack quack quackling, and a dog woof woof woofing. And an old lady saying, drat that fat cat, squeak. This is an outrage, buzzed the bee. There isn't room to swing a cat in here. The fat cat had forgotten that bees sting. Oh, cried the fat cat, meow, ow, ow. Hick went the cat and out popped the bee. Hick went the cat and out popped the rat. Hick went the cat and out popped the duck. Hick went the cat and out popped the dog. Hick went the cat and out popped the old lady. Dear me, said the old lady, you must be very hungry. Come home with me and I'll fatten you up. The cat padded along the path behind her in search of food, hick, hick, hicking all the way home. So was the cat fat enough? No, he was not. You know about the old lady who swallowed a fly, but have you heard about the fat, fat cat who swallowed an old lady? This was a tale of this big hung cat who never had a creature he didn't like to eat. This is one of the great stories by Pat Thompson and illustrated by Ali Busman, Drat the Fat Cat, just like our book that we read, Chester Raccoon and the Big Bad Bully. Both of these books that you can find in your local libraries and that we have in our schools. And we also give these out in our scholastics that you have in your classrooms when book drives come and the bookmobiles come around. These were two great books that we actually pulled from the bookmobile uh, that Boone County had not too long ago. Uh, we also were able to give those books out and you can do that. Uh, sending uh, all the things back to your school and letting everybody uh, get a handle on what you know what your child's reading and taking them to the library and letting them read. Um, we had brought some other books today. I'm not going to be able to read those, but I just want to give a shout out to them because these are books that you also may want to have in your home that you can uh, find in your library. And I'm sure that your kids have talked about those. Um, the Pout Pout Fish. This is always a fun book uh, to read. Um, this is also by Deborah Deason. This is also one of the favorite Scholastic books. Uh, I'm sure that you may have this in your home or have bought at the uh, book fairs uh, that we've had going on. Uh, the other one is It's Time for School Stinky Face. And this is also a Scholastic book. Uh, great illustrations in all these books and that's one great thing that we like to show with books with great color and um, they have great stories in them, great authors that we can talk about. So we would like to thank everyone for joining us today and again we would like for everyone to just keep reading in your homes and bring those books, check out your local libraries and tune in to Read Aloud West Virginia Boone County for all the happenings. Uh, we try to update each school uh, once a week with pics and things that are going on within your school and things that we are doing abroad that we can give out. So check on our Facebook page this week for something that uh, we're going to be giving out for the summer. And uh, everyone have a great summer and keep on reading. Thank you all.